Don't skip. No, bad. Skipping is bad. Let's see how this kind of intro works. <laughs> Since I don't want to waste your time like some other YouTubers off with their tier lists, I will just quickly explain you the rules of the tier list that I've made for myself and for each lane I'm going to give you only a brief explanation so you get an idea why the heroes are placed as they are. Hello my friends! Only 9 heroes can be placed into each tier. I did that so we were forced to make some hard decisions and not put 20 heroes in the same tier. Because this is pretty useless in my opinion. That means when a hero is missing from a list, that hero was not good enough to be even okay. Have fun hating by the way. Also, this is a solo queue tier list. If you play as a 5 man team or in the pro scene, this list would look quite different in some areas. And last, every hero in one tier is on about the same level like the others. There is no high best and low best tier. But before we get into that, let me introduce the sponsor of today's video. Ta-da! It's Raid Shadow Legends. If you didn't live under a rock the last couple of years, you know that Raid has a massive amount of champions, over 600 actually, but they also have an insane amount of different bosses. Let's put one of these guys in the spotlight today. The Guardian of the Void Keep, Malek Kavar. This guy was a priest of the light at one point, who believes light is nothing without darkness. His fellow priest didn't care for it though, poor guy. Lucky for us, he went off to master the magic of the void. So we have a nice supply of void potions to ascend our champions with. Not so lucky for us, he's not giving up his potions without a fight. Well, that didn't work out. Better I train my own champion cast. We have my beautiful elf leader, a beautiful dark elf, which every enemy seems to hate for some reason, my war priest who beats down everyone instead of buffing my team and a random crusader. Let's see how well we do in this dungeon. Well, this is harder than I thought. Time to upgrade some items and give my elf some nice food. That's right, you can feed your champions by sacrificing your unwanted champions in the tavern. And your favorite champion eats them afterwards? Better don't think too much about it. So, round two. You guys still remember us? Now take this. Booyah! This will be a cakewalk. Uh, easy GG. There's also a big update coming in this month. The Guardian Ring. It's a huge feature that gives you a lot of new ways to use your champions, including a whole faction guardian system, a new way to get legendary champions you miss out on, and an entirely new way to upgrade your favorite champions. And if you wanna get a huge head start in raids, all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan my QR code here and you will get the epic hero Chonoru, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill and 1 ancient shard. So you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here and are available for new players for the next 30 days. So again, hit the link in the description or scan my QR code and start your journey today. I always wanted to make a raid at Mission accomplished. Now, what were we talking about? Ah yeah, the tier list. First, we will go to the XB lane. This lane is of course mostly dominated by heroes who can sustain a lot or have an insane in or have insane regen abilities. What is also super important is the ability to survive on your own and defend your turret, even when you're facing multiple enemies alone. This is something that many heroes on this tier lack which is why they are not part of the best tier. Each hero on the best tier though can survive and defend their turret even when facing multiple enemies and sometimes even kill all enemies alone if they risk too much. They are also the heroes that are not that easily countered which is why other heroes are lower in the tier. Let's take our dear Monkey King as an example. If you lock him as a first or second pick, he can be easily countered by any heroes with regen abilities, like Ruby or Alpha for example. Generally speaking, if you're on the XP lane, your main focus should be defending your lane and only secondly pushing your lane or rotating to help your teammates to secure the turtle for example. But remember, try to avoid rotating further than the mid lane because then you can't defend your lane anymore. Another thing you should do is using your full combo on the like button. So this list can spread to more Mobile Legend players and your team picks more P heroes. Your enemies will not watch this video, I'm sure. Here you have the full list of the XP lane. When it comes to the gold lane, you are something like a second carry of the game. Usually it's a jungler who carries the game because they have the tank and the mid lane as support, at least theoretically. I was playing in Epic for another series I'm preparing and the tanks there are still babysitting the gold laner. 
Well, with the heroes in the best tier, you don't need a babysitter. They are all able to control the lane, even when they are going 1v2 against an enemy with a tank. The mages on this list are really good picks when playing against an MM, because in the early game they deal much more damage. And you can delay their farm drastically. Without any help, they are easily doomed. And even when they get help, if you manage to force the enemy to 1v2 you, your allies have a consistent, consistent, consistent 4v3 situation, which they hopefully use to their advantage. When the enemy has an MM, you have to focus that guy, because an MM that can peacefully farm will become an absolute nightmare in the late game. You may have noticed that Aldog was completely missing from the XP lane, but he is placed at good in the gold lane. So let me explain it quickly. On the gold lane, you will face mostly heroes that are not that strong in the early game. And you can stack his passive pretty good, even when playing passive. Because you are getting 2 stacks now when not last hitting a minion. Use bushes and only go close when your second skill is available. Then you can farm quite decently on the gold lane. On the XP lane, this is very difficult. Because many heroes are really strong in the early game. And can pressure him so much that he can't even get near enough to the minions anymore to gain any stacks. I saw others putting him even in the best tier, but in solo queue it's much more difficult to perform well with him than with a team. Here of the full list for the gold lane. Victory! Now, when it comes to the mid lane, it's almost completely dominated by mages. The only exceptions are Matilda, Selina, Beatrix and Kaja, which has all great rotation and support abilities. Latest when you've reached level 4, you can dominate with these mid lane heroes, so you have to make use of it. As a mid laner your time to shine is most in the early to mid game, before the jungler and the gold lane takes over this role. And you become more like a second support next to the Roma. Selina, Farsa, Eve and Kagura are the best at doing it. From the early game on they deal a good amount of damage and especially Farsa and Eve has awesome support skills with their ult, which can be perfectly used to secure objectives. While you can terrorize the enemy with Selina and Kagura non-stop. Matilda is an awesome support and if you're not playing solo queue, she definitely deserves a place in the best tier. But since you can trust your allies in solo queue, I put her only at great, because carrying a game alone with her is more difficult than with the other heroes on the top tier. Another hero that almost made it to the best tier is Cecilian. Now usually in a team, I would put him at great or maybe even just good. But since he's one of the only heroes that never stops from getting stronger due to his passive, you can carry many games with him, especially in solo queue and in lower ranks like Epic. The games there tend to be quite long, which makes him a really really good hero for solo queue. Because even when your team is losing a big time, at minute 20 you can almost one shot any enemy with an AoE skill and turn around the match completely. Here you have the full tier list for the mid lane. The first thing that is interesting about the Roma list is that on the best tier there is only one pure tank with Kufra. Let me explain you why. First, he has 3 strong CC skills and once he catches multiple enemies they can't escape him easily. Further than that you can't blink away from him as long as he uses his second skill and launch from a very far place away which let him set up the enemies pretty well. Other heroes like Atlas or Tigreal can do that as well but you can escape both of them much easier than a good Kufra player. The only thing about him is that you need to be really good with him to be effective. So if you only play tank as a last option, choose a hero that is easier to play, like Rafaela for example. With her you can speed up your allies, which is great in any ganking situation and give them some heal as well. She also has CC abilities, although they are not as strong as from other roamers, but they are enough considering that she can buff her own team quite a lot. Even when you just stay near your allies and non stop heal and speed them up, you are already doing a good and useful job. More than picking Johnson without a good partner for example. A Johnson with a good partner like Bane, Kadita or Badang for example can be really scary. But picking Johnson without a good partner is a wasted pick because you have dozens of better options than him. So please don't pick him without a good partner. Here you have the full Roma tier list. Last we have the junglers. Here it's all about farm, farm and more farm. So you can reach level 4 as first hero on the battlefield and taking the objectives, namely towers and the turtle in the early to mid game. In the mid game you can take over the role as a carry and with some heroes like Ling you can dominate even completely in the late game. If you manage to farm enough, the right mixture of aggression and awareness is required here. What makes this one a role that you need to practice to become really good. With the heroes on the best tier you have the best chances because they can all carry the game by themselves. 
even when you have a noob team. Now, as I said, I was playing a few rounds in Epic. I saw Sabi. Sabi? <laughs> <laughs> I saw Saber and Harley and even Helga being banned there. Please don't do that. Sure, Harley and Saber were pretty strong at one point. But right now, there are so many much stronger heroes that you should be afraid of. Like the ones in the best tier of each list. Saber can't really even one shot heroes anymore in the early game. So I don't understand why everyone in Epic is so afraid of him. I played him by myself and must say, he was much much better a few months ago. Now, I want to give my user shoutout to my Patreon Mist, Sensei Dragon, Corbear, Garo OP, Luz, and Twisted J. Click here if you want to check it out as well, and maybe even become a member yourself. And secondly, to my MLBB helpers on my Discord server, namely Akyolk, Elton, Sora, Sparrow, Five On, Senpai Granger Best MM, Zodiac, Silence Jr., and Ryo Aki. I really hope I haven't forgot anyone. They helped me putting this list together and will do that in the future as well. Now, if you haven't had enough of me yet, check out my two videos of the Ultimate Rank Up Guide series, which will help you a lot to increase your general knowledge of the game. See you over there!